Hey folks, welcome back to Jerome B. Farm and Homestead. So it is June 21st, 2022, and I wanted to do a quick update on mainly the garden and what's going on with that. So uh, the first two weeks in June, we had 10 inches of rain, maybe a little bit into the third week, I don't remember. But uh, the first week I got two rains, about two and a half inch each. And then it wasn't long after that, like four days. And we had just a deluge of uh, five inches. And it was in about an hour. So <laughs> I got a lot of wash outs and I need to work on my driveway because some of the gravel washed out. But all that rain has been good for the garden and the raised beds. The garden down below, it stood in water for a little bit. So I think that set it back a little bit. Uh, yeah the the rain also is good for weeds and when it's that wet i wasn't getting out of here weeding and the weeds just got out of control so i have caught up mostly on that though so i've been trying to work on it so i could shoot a video so anyway last time i was talking about uh the storms that came through and the damage so i uh got a couple new cherry trees i'll show you those so let's uh just walk around and, and i'll show you kind of what's going on so here's my little cherry tree but uh man it is tiny look how tiny that is but uh there's a little dinky graft down here i'll try to keep that graft uh protected there but uh yeah i didn't know you could graft something so tiny but that's my ebay bean cherry tree so we got a few peaches here Looks like bugs are getting on them but I did I did hit them with neem oil once which you should probably do it like once a week but yeah almost all of these have a little hole in it and sap coming out pear tree not sure why we've got some uh, limbs dying on this pear tree they're not damaged they're just dead which is kind of odd. I wonder, I don't know, if that has anything to do with the cedar trees around here. But yeah, look at that. It's just it's just a limb that just died. And it's healthy down here. But right there on out, it's just dead. I don't know much about trees, or especially pear trees. Here's another pear tree. Got some pears on here this one doesn't seem to have that issue it's got some uh spotted leaf stuff going on there but uh for the most part it looks pretty healthy got us some little pears going this little dwarf apple tree here it's uh got some little apples i think this is the first time We've had apples on this tree. And over here, this is the peach tree that had a lot of peaches. And it dropped several peaches uh, early on. They were down here on the ground. But uh, they're starting to get some size and shape to them. Oh, we got some pretty sunflowers coming up in the compost area. We, there's always stuff growing in the compost area. It grows better here than any place else. But yeah, some real, real pretty volunteer sunflowers. They're not the big variety. We'll take them. Looks like the butterflies are on there. There's a native bee. But the honeybees uh, like these as well. Uh, they get a lot of pollen off of them. So here is the... I call it the it's a back to Eden garden because it's got the uh, wood chips to suppress weeds and uh, it's done a great job. I have not had hardly any weeds out in here. Now where I have bare dirt I have had some weeds to pull and I've let a few of the sunflowers that showed up in here coming up volunteer. I went ahead and let them go. There's not too many. 
But in these little mounds here, you see them kind of zigzag throughout. I think there's 20 of them. But uh, those are rattlesnake watermelons. And they're the uh, kind of green as, and uh, have that watermelon green and yellow pattern on the outside. And they're long and, and narrow. Uh, they're not the big round like... I don't know my watermelon varieties. Those big old round green ones, it's not that type. And this row, right here all the way down, all the way to the end is cantaloupe. There's cantaloupe uh, every six inches. I tried to put them by the emitters on my watering system so uh, they would grow. Now these big vines, those came up volunteer. And I'm pretty sure it's a cantaloupe. Uh, it's the same kind of leaf you see those leaves and then these leaves it looks the same to me they're just bigger man look at all the blooms in there so everyone in blooms you know could be a cantaloupe so I pictured this area you know in uh, end of July August this will be completely covered with vine and uh, all of these uh, watermelons. So I was accidentally standing on that one. That's not good. So we got us some blooms here. So each one of these has an emitter in here. There it is. These are uh, two gallons per hour, and this is damp. So it ran at, I think I have it set to go off at 5 a.m. and 5 p.m., and it runs for about 10 minutes. Oh, here's a weed. Looky there. So down here, they're not bad, but up in the raised beds, boy, they're going nuts. Let's see, the broccoli is gone. Broccoli's all been harvested, and the broccoli plants were fed to the chickens, and they liked them. And uh, I transplanted four tomatoes from the raised bed garden down here. There they are. That kind of, uh, they didn't care to be transplanted. It set them back some. And this soil down here isn't near as good. There's a little tomato on that one. So this is where the broccoli was, and I pulled my uh, water line back off of this row here because this is onions, and the onions are ready to harvest, so you don't want to be watering your onions before you harvest them. They won't last near as long. And uh, getting some weeds in there. But, uh, you can see it's getting pretty dry. But there's some nice ones in there. And these are the small ones. I'll show you the big ones here in a minute. So, well, I don't need to pull it up. You can see how big it is. But uh, I'm going to harvest onions and garlic uh, this weekend. That's the plan anyway. So, uh, let's see. Yeah, cantaloupes down to right here. And these are pumpkins. This doesn't look good. This looks like that vine is dying. There's something in the vine. Don't tell me cantaloupes get a uh, vine boring weevil because that's what that looks like. Right there. See how that little crack yeah, those things ruin the squash, so I don't even plant squash anymore. What they do is they eat your vine from the inside out. Okay, and on this side of it, we have uh, tomatoes, and these tomatoes here were way too wet, and I think they finally have gotten dried out. And uh, so I'm growing them up in this cow panel. I don't know how many are long here, probably 20 or so. But yeah, they're shaping up and they're looking good now. 
they did look pretty sad. And uh, I've gone through here and pulled all the suckers off of them. And I just this week I turned on this drip line because you can see they've got the the two gallon an hour emitter as well. There's one of those on each tomato, and uh, that's damp down there, but it's not you know standing in water. It's not soft and wet, so I think that's good. Oh, there's a little tomato right there. But yeah, these tomato plants look way better than they did. In fact, the ones on the end here are much better. That one looks really healthy. So this drip system is great. It's saving me a lot of time. I came down through here last night and I trained some of these up into the, the panel. Let's see where I push that one under. Got it in there. So yeah, well, this one's getting fairly tall. So these plants are more tall and, and spindly. The ones up in the raised bed garden are thicker. I don't, I'm assuming that's uh, the difference in soil and location. Because they're all pretty much the same variety. This one here is doing really good. This one's resembling like the ones up in the raised bed more. And I don't know why. It's the same variety, getting a little bit of leaf curl there. It's been really hot the last three or four days. Putting on some blooms, they, don't, they seem to be okay. I did come in and put some uh, organic fertilizer in each one of these. So as it's uh, dripping on them, it's, it's gonna be getting fertilizer. I envision this panel just full of tomato vine but uh <laughs> it hasn't happened so but got a long ways to go this year out front here we planted some uh flowers we the wife did so there's a dahlia that's coming up from a bulb zinnias she just planted these i don't know what they are marigolds and because she put seeds in here, uh, I couldn't weed this for the longest time, so it got out of control with uh, crabgrass coming up in here. But man, it was it was terrible. But got that under control. There's a big old dahlia right there. Those bloom so pretty. Zinnias. She started those from seed. The uh, passion flower, it's got a lot of blooms on it. It's bloomed a lot, but I don't see a whole lot of fresh ones now. There's one right there. And around this side, we got the same thing. We have dahlias, marigolds, zinnias. Oh, these uh, lilies are blooming now. I think those are day lilies. Over here in the cold frame, the spinach is all cleared out and gave that to the chickens. And I had some spindly little tomatoes I stuck in here. <laughs> They're really sad. And uh, in fact, I pulled up or I transplanted some big tomatoes from the raised bed down along that cow panel I was showing you by the, the wood chips. And these are what I pulled out of there that just weren't doing very well. And I moved up here. And that one looks like a goner. <laughs> but uh, this second planting of lettuce is doing good. This is kind of a head style lettuce. And this is just a leafy lettuce. So I mainly give this to the chickens. So I've been uh, snapping off the, uh, the bolts that come up and it's it puts up new ones so this one i've snapped off before and it's put up two new bolts so you can see there where i the old one and those two that i just took off grab this one back here
give some of this to the chickens. Look at those. <laughs> All right, here you go. Boom. They'll have that devoured in no time. Oh, and we have a uh, sunflower that came up in this uh, little brooding pen. Big one. There's a honeybee on that one. Oh, I forgot to show you these onions. So these onions are ready uh, to pick, to harvest, and uh, get them to dry. So I haven't been watering them at all. But these are huge. Let me show you. Like here's one of the bigger ones here. There's my hand. <laughs> Look how big they are. Man, they're nice. I don't think I've ever had onions this big. But, uh, this side here is uh, Texas Super Sweet, uh, 1015 Sweet. That's uh, Dixondale Farms onions, and they're in Texas, and you order them by the bunch. They're like eight bucks a bunch, and a bunch has a lot of onions in it. I'd say around 50. Now from the back side here, you can see cucumbers and that's inside the raised bed so they're kind of coming out here and, and growing up the fence there but uh, it got too wet for them and there's a lot of yellow spot uh, disease on them but I think now that it's drying out and warming up they're starting to vine a lot better but they were overcome by the carrots. I've never seen carrots so tall. I never had a decent crop of carrots, and these carrots are looking good. So let's get around there. Oh, right here's my, uh, let's see, spearmint and bee balm. That's what these two things here are. And a volunteer tomato <laughs> so here's my watering setup for the garden down below and the wood chips it uh, goes off at uh, let's see 5 a.m. 13 minutes every 12 hours so that's how much that's getting watered down there Okay, so there's the bean tunnel. So these are Kentucky Wander pole beans. And there's some passion flower growing up on this as well. But uh, yeah, I said by July this would be all covered and it looks like it's it's getting there. Looks like the passion flower made it to the top <laughs> and it's going over the other side. But yeah, these Kentucky Wonder Pole beans are excellent green beans. They're long, easy to pick. You got to pick them young so they're not too stringy. I just train these things up in here. I just think this is cool though, this tunnel thing. On these cow panels. This is two, actually three uh, cow panels or livestock panels. I don't know what you call them. You get them at Tractor Supply. So going around this way, here's a little watering reel to water what doesn't get watered very well by the the drip system. Here's my drip system. I've got the same timer that's over there on the other garden. And it's set to, let's see, every 12 hours and 14 minutes, 5.30 a.m. So that lets one run uh, 
without the other one so they're not on at the same time. So right here is sunflowers that we planted intentionally. <laughs> we kind of ran out of vegetables to plant so we started putting uh, you know pretty stuff in here, flowers and stuff. Marigolds are there but uh, they're being taken over by the sunflowers and this is the cilantro which it's gone to seed now. It, uh, it was, it's really pretty when it's in full bloom and it tastes, uh, I like it in salsa. It's really good. They say it's a genetic thing, cilantro, if you like it or not. And, uh, if you have the gene that you like it, it tastes fine and, or whatever. And if you don't like it, supposedly it tastes like soap. But uh, I'm one of the non-soap people, and I do like it in my salsa. So let's back up a little. Now we're on the outside of the tunnel. And here's all of my garlic. So I'm going to harvest garlic this weekend. It's ready. You see the leaves are, are uh, starting to turn brown. So I'll harvest this. So I had 20 cloves from... Three or four plants that I had last year, and uh, those that was the only survivor when I bought this originally back during the pandemic. So yeah, I, that garlic's going to be good, and that's I think it is the variety is music. So along here, zinnias. But uh, wife's disappointed in these. She said they're supposed to be those big red ones, like the ones out front, and they're all a bunch of little ones. So. She thinks there's a mix up in the seed. And uh, there's some bigger zinnias out here and marigolds. These marigolds will get big. And here are the carrots. And I've never had carrots so big. I think it's, you know, all the rain we had at the right time. And, uh, they're doing good. I don't think they're quite ready to harvest, though. Let me show you what they look like. This is my tester carrot here. So you can see how big that is. I don't know. What do you all think? Should I, should I pull them? I bet they're down close to the wire mesh in the bottom of this. But you can see down here. The, so my plan was these carrots would be done. And... I would harvest them all and then the cucumbers would be going up this thing here but the cucumbers are getting choked out by carrots but they're kicking in now and they're they're growing up here so we'll be making some refrigerator pickles if you want a good refrigerator pickle recipe check out uh, Ronnie on early bird farm it, I don't know if he did it on that channel. He's got another channel called Southern Food Junkie. It might be on that one, but he has an excellent refrigerator pickle recipe. And over here, we just housed some bulbs, planted them to, to get them in the ground. As a wife, some of you know, she hurt her wrist and shoulder and had surgery and all that, so she couldn't do a lot. So these are lilies and dahlias. So these are just here. To keep the bulbs going so uh so we that's where we put them <laughs> so tomatoes got them along here and along there so i was working on this so i had this i saw a method where they use this twine and you zigzag in and out of your plants uh i don't care for that because what happens is when we get a good wind the plant will shift in this twine and what they've done is they've all kind of shifted that way and are laying over and i worked on them quite a bit last night to get them standing up and uh you can see this one here is kind of laying down again but uh yeah i don't like this twine method and when you're in here trimming with uh your nippers uh pruning your your tomatoes i I got my twine in one of them and I cut it 
so I had to put it back with another piece of string. And another thing this does, as your plants get big and you start winding them up through there, that twine gets tight and the posts start pulling in and uh, the string up top gets a lot of slack in it. So yeah, I don't care for that. And here's these over here. I did a lot of pruning on them last night, cutting out some dead leaves at the bottom, uh, getting them a more airflow down in here so they don't uh, get disease. And I cut out quite a few suckers. In the past, I just let my tomatoes go willy-nilly. So I'm trying to keep ahead of all the suckers and stuff. I still, like this, this branch here, that's a sucker. And I didn't get it when it was young, so the plant should be going up through here. But instead, I, I've got this sucker thing coming out, you know, towards the walkway. But uh, we've got some good tomatoes set on. I'm excited. I didn't have already any tomatoes at all last year. It was sad. <laughs> and yeah, here's some over here. Yeah, we're going to be in the tomatoes heavy when all those, those are all going to ripen pretty much at the same time. Yeah, some of them are down close to the ground and I had to make sure and get them up off the ground. You can see them back in there. And this is a flower plot, uh, zinnias. And these big things are cosmos and they make a really pretty flower. I've talked about this before, this uh, mini hula ho. Man, this thing is awesome for weeding in an area like this. So you see you'll have all these little bitty weeds, so they're gonna get big at some point, but you just do this and it just takes them right off and kills them. There's one I missed. So all those baby weeds will turn into those and this will turn into a giant behemoth. So yeah, it's, this is a neat little gadget. I got it on Amazon. There's a link below down to this if you want to check it out. I think they raised the price. I think they're like $24 now for that little thing, which is kind of high, it seems like to me, but boy, I sure like it. Let's see, over here, uh, some more dahlia bulbs. We put it in there, but only one came up. Here's my nice uh, jalapenos that was on my Facebook page. And uh, these are really pretty healthy jalapeno plants. I've got my drip system going in, right along in here on them. But I pulled quite a few big ones off of there last night. There's quite a few left, but I'm gonna let them get a little bigger. So we'll be having some jalapeno poppers tomorrow. <laughs>
Man, I think this tunnel is cool. I've never done anything like this before. <laughs> so that's the end of the video. Give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe on your way out. And uh, we'll do another homesteading video probably mid-July. And we should have some uh, small watermelons and cantaloupes by then, hopefully, if my vines aren't all dead. I hope not. So uh, we'll catch you on the next homestead update. Y'all take care.